This is part 68 of AngularCRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss posting data to the server using the Angular HTTP client service. We're going to make use of this create employee form to create a new employee. Once we fill this form and when we click the save button, save employee method within our create employee component is called. And if you notice, this method is actually calling save method of our employee service, which is right here. And notice this method is actually doing two things. Creating a new employee if the employee does not exist. If the employee already exists, it updates that employee. And the way we distinguish between whether it's a new employee or an existing employee is by checking the ID property of the employee object. If the ID property is null, then we know it's a new employee. If the ID property is not null, then we know it's an existing employee. It comes into the else block and updates that existing employee. At the moment, both these operations, creating and updating, is being performed against this list employees array, which is private to this employee service, and it is defined right here. We no longer want to do this. We already have a RESTful service available at this URI, localhost 3000 for slash employees. When we use this create employee form to create a new employee, we want to post that new employee object to this URI of our RESTful service. For that, we are going to make use of Angular's HTTP client service. At the moment, we are computing the ID of the new employee object on the client side in the save method right here. We no longer have to do this on the client side anymore. This server side service is going to do that for us. At the moment, notice we've got three employee objects and the max ID value is three. Now, when we post a new employee object to this service, the service will assign an ID value of four for that new employee object. We'll look at that in action in just a bit. We no longer need this highlighted piece of code because the server is going to assign the ID for us. So let's delete this. Now let's use HTTP client service to issue a POST request. In our previous videos, we have already injected the HTTP client service into this employee service using the constructor. So let's use this HTTP client service to issue a POST request. As you might have guessed already, we use the POST method to issue a POST request. To successfully POST a new employee object to the server, we need to specify three things. The first one is the URI to which we want to post the new employee object. And that URI is this localhost 3000 employees. Next, we need to pass the employee object that we want to post to the server. That employee object is coming as an input parameter. So let's pass this employee object as a second parameter to this post method. Finally, we need to specify the type of data that we are posting to the server. Now let's go to the definition on this post method. Notice the third parameter is called options. To specify the type of data that we want to pass to the server, we're going to make use of content type header. Headers. And this is of type HTTP headers, as you can see right here. So let's create a new instance of that. And we want to create a content type header. The type of data that we want to send to the server is JSON. So we set the value of application for slash JSON. So these are the three things that we need for a successful post. The URI to which we want to post the data. The data itself that we want to post. In our case, a new employee object. And finally, the content type HTTP header, which tells the server the type of data that we are posting. Now, if there is any error processing the request, we want to be able to handle that. So let's use the RxJS pipe method. And to this, let's pass catch error operator. To this catch error operator, we pass our error handler method, which is handle error. We discussed error handling in detail in our previous videos in this series. So I'm not going to go over this again. This last line right here is pushing the new employee object into the list employees array, which is local to the service. We no longer have to do this because we are posting the employee object to the server. So let's delete this line. Now from the IntelliSense, notice the return type of this post method, observable of object. 
But we know here we are posting an employee object to the server. Upon a successful post, the server is going to return us that posted employee object. So to specify the type of data that we are going to get back from the server, we are going to make use of this post method generic parameter. Now when we hover the mouse over this post method, notice the return type. It is observable of employee. So let's set this as the return type for the save method. Notice we have a red squiggly. That's because we are missing a return statement right here. We want to return what this post method returns that is an observable of employee. So let's use the return keyword here. Now notice this code in the else block. It's still updating data in this private list employees array. In our next video, we'll discuss updating data on the server using the HTTP client service put method. Until then, let's leave this code as it is. Now let's modify the code that calls this save method. Our create employee component calls the save method. And here is that call. And if you look at the save method in our employee service, it returns an observable. So to be able to call this method, we want to subscribe to the observable. If we do not subscribe, then this method will not be called. So let's use the subscribe method and subscribe to the observable. Now notice from the IntelliSense, this subscribe function has got three parameters, next, error and complete. All of them specify callback functions. The next callback function is called when the observable successfully emits an item. Error callback function is called when there is an error and the complete callback function is called when the observable completes. Now notice the first callback function, next. It receives the employee object from the server. So let's handle it. Let's call the parameter data. We know this is of type employee. Now what we want to do within this callback function is first log the employee object that we received from the server. We also want to move these two lines inside our next callback function. Now notice this first line right here. We are first copying this employee object properties into a new employee object and then we are passing that new employee object to the save method. We no longer have to do that. We can directly pass this employee object to the save method. Now let's also specify an error callback function. We pass the error callback function as a second parameter to the subscribe method. This error callback function is automatically called when there is an error. Notice from the IntelliSense, the error object is passed as a parameter to the callback function and this is typed as any. So let's call the parameter error and the type is any. Now if we want, we can display the error in a label on the create employee component but in the interest of time, I'm simply going to log it to the console. Now let's navigate to the create route and create a new employee. Notice our new employee, David, is successfully created. Notice the employee object that we received from the server is logged to the console by our success callback function and if you look at the ID value for David, it is 4. This is computed by server and we should also have the same employee object in our db.json file. Notice in our db.json file, we have our newly created employee object right here. The ID value is 4 as expected. Here is the code that we just implemented. In our next video, We'll discuss updating data on the server using the HTTP client service put method. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.